Welcome back. In this video, we will look at static members of a class. So when we talk about members, it means it's all the properties and the methods inside of a class. So let's declare a variable at the top, but I'm going to use the static keyword in order to declare this. So let's declare an integer and I'm going to call this integer number of objects. And I'm going to initialize this value to a zero. Now I'm going to save this. So let's go to main quickly and we create a new bank account. And let's set the balance to 100. Now if I go to account and I put the dot there, you can see I've got access to balance. I've got deposit and withdraw. So that's the ones or the members I have got access to. Not this balance because it's private but I got access to balance, which is the method, either the getter or the setter, and I've got access to deposit and withdraw. So these are all the non-static members of the class. But you can see, I cannot see number of objects. So what happens here is static members of a class do not belong to objects of the class, because if I put the dot on an object or an instant of the class, you cannot see that member listed there. Even though it is public, it's not private, it's not, it's not got an underscore there. So how do we access it? Well, actually, you can just call bank account and you can see there's the number of objects. So you use static members by calling the class name dot the member, in this case, number of objects. Whereas in order to get the balance, I would say account, which is an object of bank account put the dot, and now I can have access to that balance field. So there's a slight difference here, which means that number of objects in this case does not belong to the objects of the class, but it belongs to the class itself. And then we can do some interesting things. I'm just going to show you one example of how we can use this, and then we'll do something that's a bit more useful. So for example, here we could, we could keep track of the number of objects that gets created in this class, if you wanted to do so. So let's add some bodies to our constructors here. So at the end of the initializer, I'm going to add some brackets and remove the semicolon so I can do some something more inside of the bank account constructor. And what I want to do is to say number of objects plus plus, which means every time I'm creating a new object in this constructor, I will keep track of it. And I'm going to increment that zero to be one, two, three every time it gets created. The same for this named constructor. At the end, I can have my curly braces and add something more to it. Number of objects plus plus. And the same for this last constructor. Also remove the semicolon number of objects plus plus. So now every time I create a new object, whether it's from the default constructor or one of the named constructors, I will keep track of the number of objects inside of this variable. And that's part of the class. It's not part of an object. So if I go back to main dot dot, let's do the following. Let's create var account equals bank account balance this. Let's say var account two equals bank account new VIP start amount 100 and let's create the third one account three equals bank account dot new client and let's print out that variable now so I'm going to say print and you will note that I won't say account one or count two or account three there with the dot I'm going to the class itself which is bank account and I'm going to print out the number of objects so let's run this quickly. Now you can run it from there also, just this little run button there, and it will print out three. So there's three objects. Or you can go to terminal and use dart main dot dart. Right, so this is how you can use a static variable inside of the class to keep track of something. But uh, maybe something more useful. What I normally do and also in my Flutter projects is to have some sort of file that have all my default values for my strings. So I could have this something like strings dot dot, and then inside of that class, I will have, let's say, class strings. Just don't call it string because there's already a class called string. So I'll say class strings. And then I can have a static string for maybe my loading 
animation and the text for that loading animation will be busy loading dot 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 please wait and I can have a static string for let's say error on the username so if somebody enters a username and that username is not correct I can have uh, the username you typed does not exist and we can maybe have a third one static string error password and that password error could be something like the password you typed is not correct uh, static right so these are static members now of the class and you can see that I do not even have a constructor in here because I'm not interested in creating objects of this class but what I am interested in is that I can use this anywhere I want in any one of my classes I can just go to strings and you can see there's the strings class so I can just you can see it wants to auto import from strings so I'm going to click on it and it adds the import at the top and then on that strings I can just pull out a dot and I can see there's a, a mistake there but let's say I want to print out loading there save it let's run this and you can see it prints out that loading string I do not need to go and retype this every time I want to use busy loading please wait so I can just refer back to my strings dot dot which is my strings class and if I need new strings just change that error if I need new strings I can just keep on adding them here and referencing it by just saying strings dot whatever I want so I do not need to go and create a new object assign it to something before I need to use it I can actually just use it anytime I want by just going to the class name dot the member now you can use the same in the same way we can also create methods that we're going to reuse so I'm going to say static let's say the method will return back an int let's say we want to double a value so just a simple method as an example and we're going to send in a value and the only thing we will do there let's say it's something you use a lot um, I'm going to say value multiplied by 2 and that's it if I want to use this method to double something let's save it I can just go and call it here so I can say print strings dot use double at double the value and I will say 10 there and if I run this that will double the value for me right so useful to have a class called something where you've got all of your defaults and maybe some of the methods that you use a lot throughout your application so you don't need to go and recreate them in every single file you use you can just do it once and then reuse that method somewhere else in one of your other classes thanks for watching the video see you in the next one